here has a solution. It will almost certainly face legal challenges, as you can imagine. Joining us right now to talk about this very tough issue is immigration attorney John Gunning. Always oh, great to have you, and John. Thanks for coming to see us. Thanks, John. Okay, I don't even know where to start because it's such a huge topic. But but let's go to let's go to the president's executive order. Where does that stand legally, and does it stand? The president's executive order, I mean, I think is going to be challenged in court almost immediately. Part of the order was the president asking the attorney general to go back to court in a case called the Flores settlement and asking the court, make sure that you try to get this to be legal because this executive order isn't going to stand if it's challenged in court because of long-standing precedent that you cannot detain children for more than about 20 days without putting them in specific facilities, and that is not what is happening. All right, John, if you could clear up some confusion for, for a lot of people, including myself, there, are, there is confusion about where this originally came from. There are people who say this has been around since 1997, and there are people who say, no, 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 this is the president's policy that was put into effect just a couple of months ago. Where does it actually lie? As with everything with immigration, it's extremely complicated and confusing. The Flores settlement, as I talked about, has been around since 1997, and that was uh, a settlement that the American government had with the children who were being detained because their conditions were so horrible for many, many years. And so we treated children who were in immigration detention very differently over the last 20 years. Now, this is this is something that has been going on for decades. Now, what changed is the president's zero-tolerance policy for illegal border crossings. A couple of months ago, the attorney general, at the direction of President Trump, said, we're going to refer for prosecution 100% of the people illegally entering the United States. Now, if those people happen to be parents traveling with children, those children were going to be separated from the parents who were being prosecuted federally. And so that is where this problem came from. It is a change in the policy of of uh, immigration criminal prosecutions about two months ago. Okay, so there are people who are coming across who are seeking asylum, which is different from people who are crossing it illegally. How do you differentiate? Well, it all depends on how you come into the United States. Most of the people coming over to the southern border are seeking asylum. If you walk up to a port of entry and tell the American government, I don't have any paperwork to be here, but I'm afraid to go home, that is not illegal. That is not an illegal entry. You cannot be prosecuted for that, and you will not be separated from your children because of that. However, you don't necessarily have to be let into the country to seek asylum either. So what many people do, usually at the instruction of the human smuggling uh, coyotes and everybody else, is you enter the country illegally and then you ask for asylum because then they have to process you for asylum and that is where we're coming into these family separation problems. Okay. Let's talk about what happens now. This is a massive task. So if this moves forward, if the court does not say, okay, Mr. President, you can't do what you just did, mm. how do you go about reunifying these families? I really don't know the answer to that. The, the detention facilities across the nation, we spend about $2 billion detaining people all over the United States. I have plenty of clients who came over the southern border and then are dispersed across the country from Georgia to Florida to California where they're detained and they know no one. And they do the same thing with the children. And these children are being shipped all across the United States. And so reuniting them with their parents is going to be nearly impossible. Does it feel monumental to you? It, it, it does. It does. Immigration has just become such an, an unbelievably uh, interesting and depressing area of a practice right now. Wow. Uh, John Guy and I tell you, like I said, we could talk to you for an hour. I wish we had more time, but it, it is certainly going to be an interesting thing to watch as it progresses. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us this morning. We appreciate your time, Bob. All right, guys. Thank you.